All right, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and set up uh, a memory store first because I want to show you what actually happens underneath the hood, um, like what, what's going on currently before we actually dive into the session store with our database. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and first go inside this sessions options. So right over here, okay, we're going to go ahead and pass in a store and I'm going to create an instance. Actually, I'm going to do it this way. Uh, let me go over here underneath the port variable. And I'm going to call this const memory store equals new session dot memory store. Okay, and then I'm going to go down over to our sessions object. I'm going to pass in this store property and assign it to the value. The value of this store property will just be uh, this memory store variable. All right, so what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and log this memory store every single time we make a request. So we have this app.use uh, middleware function that we created, if you remember. And all this does is before we go to the request handler, we just log the request method in the URL. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, log the... I'll actually create another middleware function just to separate concerns. And I'll go ahead and just log the memory store just so you can see what it actually looks like so you get a better understanding of how our session data is being stored internally so what we'll do right now is we'll go ahead and let's run our app and so we're connected so i'm going to make a get request first we're not logged in yet now you're going to see this is the memory store okay and uh there's this property called sessions now let me go ahead and click login so we just logged in successfully Okay, so now uh, let's go ahead and make a get request. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the store right now. So right over here, I know there's a lot of logs, so I'm going to highlight it right over here. You can see that now after we had logged in and made a request, you can see that our session is actually stored over here. And what exactly do you see? Well, this is the ID. Remember, every single session ID is going to be unique and it's going to map to the session data. And if we were to go into our cookies, uh, either in the browser or in Postman, whichever you're using, if I click on connect.sid or uh, session ID, uh, this all the way up until this dot is literally what this value is. Let me kind of like show you on the same time. It's going to be a little bit difficult. So I'll have to scroll a bit. Okay, hopefully you can see this, but let me move this a little bit. So you can kind of see right over here that these two are literally the same values. Okay, this is just the whole uh, this is whole the this is the whole encrypted cookie. When this is sent to the server, like I said before, we use the same secret that we use to encrypt the cookie to decrypt it. Okay, and then what happens is every single time when we make a request, it's going to go ahead and use that session ID, get the corresponding data from the session store. So what so what you, you can think that underneath the hood, what happens is. They go ahead and retrieve the session data, which is which is a serialized, which is the JSON that's serialized or, you know, it's in a string format. OK, and then what happens is underneath the hood passport, remember the deserialized function, we take that user ID, right? And then we go ahead and we fetch uh, the database for the correct user. And then we, we take that user, we pass it in the done function, and then that is attached to the request uh, dot user uh, property. Okay, so the value of the user is going to be that. Okay, so hopefully this gives you some better insights of what's going on. Okay, and obviously if I were to clear this cookie from the browser, and if I were to go ahead and make a get request, you'll see that inside our memory store, we still have the session data living uh, on the server in memory though. All right, so now that we understand what the memory store looks like uh, and how it saves all of the sessions, um, let's go ahead and just remove the memory store completely. And we'll go ahead and install Connect Mongo, which is going to allow us to set up our own uh, session store with our MongoDB uh, uh, connection, okay? So let's go into our terminal and type in npm i connect mongo, okay? And let me just run the server. And let me open up the connect mongo docs just so we can see what we need to do so we're going to go ahead and import connect mongo so i'll do that right over here and we'll call this mongo store equals require connect mongo just like that 
Okay, and we'll go ahead and we'll just create a new store by calling the static create method. Seems like this Mongo store class has a static method. So Mongo store dot create. So I think I'm just going to actually uh, create a new connection. We'll pass in the Mongo URL. So it'll literally just be the same URL. Okay. And now if we go into our console, uh, everything should work just fine. Okay. So let's go into our database. So we can see that we have the sessions collection that was created, but there's nothing in there. Now let's go ahead and make a get request. We're not logged in. So let's go ahead and click send. Now, uh, if we click on send over here, we should be able to get the resource. But if we look at the sessions collection in our database, see now we have all of the session data inside the database. Okay, so before we had it in memory, now it's all in the database. So you're probably wondering, well, what's the whole purpose of this? Well, watch this. Let's go ahead and restart the server. Okay. So if I restart the server and if I try to make a request now, notice how I'm actually still able to make that request. We still have our previous cookie that we got when we just logged in. Okay. And we're still able to make the request. We don't have to re-log in anymore. And the reason why is because we have our session data stored in the database. Okay. See how this ID for the session ID, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. This session ID is saved in the database and it maps to this session data right over here, which I can't really expand it, but it's the same session ID that you see right over here in the cookie section. Okay, so um, pretty much now that we have our session store saved, or now that we have our session data saved in the database, if the server for some reason crashes, we'll have everything backed up in the, in, in the session data in the database. Okay, now there also are moments where you might need to update the session too. We'll cover that in a separate episode, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and leave it right over here. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Peace out.